Ja, ein tolles Haus. Tolles Haus. Das haben wir genau aus dem September 28 Jahren. Ja. Ja, das kam heute noch nach. So, can we do a really quick in a, yes. interview right now? Okay. This is the Reviewer Magazine. We're here with Philip Scholes Ritterman, which is a, uh, you, you are a San Diego based uh, photographer? Are you based in San Diego? Yes. Okay. Originally from Germany. Originally from Peru. Uh, oh, okay. 14 years in Peru, 13 years in Germany, and now here. Okay, well, thank you. 28 I years, as I just found out, because I, this oh, really? was my first client when I was in. No in, kidding. Yeah. The, the German speaking yeah, gentleman yeah, was just right here. Okay. His house for That's awesome. I, you know, we, we covered navigating by light several oh, yeah. years ago, and yes. I, I, I saw the, the show for that and everything, and I was really impressed with the work. The thank you. large, I thought it was large format. Um, the, the images were shot with the. 35 millimeter or uh, digital this, this SLR. The, in navigating by light. I'm still yeah, that was done mostly with medium format. Medium format, medium okay. Format. Like this, 20 films. And this is all small format uh, SLR. Well, I mean, it's like how many megapixels? Uh, 21. 21. So it's okay, a Canon. lot of resolution. Right, right, right. Of course, right. you stitch more of it together, and you end up with some pretty sizable that's images. That's amazing. I bet those files are huge. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah. And uh, the the name of your new book is The Emperor's River. Yeah. Could we walk over here real quick? Okay, um, and, and this was... Hey, Alexis. Okay, thanks for coming and bringing your friends. Thank you. All right. Okay. And uh, is this uh, number one? Yes. Well, this is the artist. Book number one. This is the one I'm keeping because it's still a prototype. And there's oh, okay. Some, there's some flaws. <laughs> We're the, still working out the kinks. The, uh, the lady in church, Erica, the uh, curator of the uh, right. Athenaeum, was telling, us, was telling me that they bought the first book. That's right. So that helped you fund your trip? That's right. Okay, so it was basically, they're, they were kind of like the docent or the, uh, they were your they sponsor, were, sort they of. Were, yes, and there, there's a sponsor page in the back where I thank the four sponsors who uh, helped fund this whole project. Okay. And it was buying a proverbial, you know, cat in the bag, because right. I didn't even know what it was going to look like. <laughs> I mean, I was going over there to do some work, and yeah. I... I didn't know what I was going to end up with, so it was a real leap of faith for, for them. And, and they, they knew they knew about navigating by line. They were sure, familiar sure. with the, your work, yes, so they yes. pretty much knew your track record. Um, and uh, if people want to buy subsequent books, what do they go for? A 7,500, did you say? The next two copies are 7,500, and they're going up from there because. Oh really? I can. Are they already I can sold? Hardly afford to make them even for 7,500. No just, kidding. It's crazy. It's so much labor. Do you make it all by hand, or do you yeah, have do you yeah, contract I'm working out with anything? somebody, and you know, so. All right. Yeah. And how how long did it take for you to shoot the material in this book? Um, it's about a year and a half now. So. You were in China for a year and a half. No, no, I was there for a total of two and two months and something. And when you were there, did you ever have to get any permission, like from the Chinese government? Uh, you were just basically tourists with the camera, and you were allowed to roam. Yeah, it was with sort of on your own. It was like having plausible deniability, you know, walking okay. up a little with the SLR. Oh, I'm just curious about the Grand Canal. I'm photographing the Grand Canal. I actually okay. had considered working with the local governments of these towns, but what uh -huh. I found was that I would often be taken to places that were presentable, where they wanted me to see oh, something okay. that they were proud of, and that's not necessarily what I wanted to photograph. Not they would want to control. They, they would want to control you if they knew about you. Right, and because they're looking at that as an opportunity to broadcast their destination. Sure, so sure. So they're going to show it from the best side. They're an up-and-coming country, and they're trying to like control the trajectory of their publicity and, and, and all and, that. And every township wants to attract business, uh -huh. so they want to look as good as they can. Mm -hmm. So that ended up not being workable. I, I just wanted to be able to go and stumble across things, and like I said, between point A and point B, right. the most interesting stuff happened along the way. Did anybody ever give you any trouble? Like, where are you taking our photos? You were just saying one time, some some gentleman with us, some kids were saying, yeah, you know, wave, no. wave, wave. You never had anybody go. No, then I mean, that one picture. Some countries we tried to get into, we couldn't. But you know, three out of four times we would walk in and nobody would say anything. So it was great. Now it's a, very, it's a really diverse country. There's a lot of uh, regionalism. Was there one area that you found uh, especially charming or that impressed you the most? Um, one area in particular along the Grand Canal. You know, there were certain towns that were, um, you know, less industrial, a little more 
primitive? No, they, were, they, they had a little more history to them, so, mm -hmm. and, you know, it came together with weather and the food we'd found, and so one okay. over another might be a little more interesting, but it was all fascinating. I don't have a favorite, I, I have to say. I mean, when we were on the large lakes there, these large freshwater lakes um, around Weishan, that yeah. was great. We hung out there for three days. Ushi was also really great that was we were there for three days that was the one with the night fish market and you were saying that the the history of the canal goes back to four something bc and the first um, segment of it was built in 460 bc okay and uh have they have they obliterated pretty much most of that history were you able to find areas where it was still you can look at it and go hey, this is like not, not uh, centuries and centuries the original stuff is all gone it's because all gone. it's constantly it's constantly being reworked and updated and widened to yeah. accommodate, you know, bigger barges. It's so, in use constantly. Yeah. So there might be a marker somewhere saying this is the original site of something, mm -hmm. the pagoda that that uh, was the end of the line for Beijing. So you would, since you're in a flat countryside, you see the pagoda off in the distance, and then you know you've arrived. So in general, you're you're. But but other than that, there was no original artifact to be it, that I saw. In general, you just everything that you saw was pretty much pretty much 20th, 21st century. You didn't you didn't find it to be old worldish. I mean, it's like what well, parts of it, like what you saw the stone bridges from 600, 800 years ago. Okay. Some of the temples were older, but nothing dating back to you know 460 BC. I didn't see anything like that. But in 10 or 20 years, when those condos that we saw rising uh, are, are are probably filled, it's just going to be all gone. You think? I think they'll they'll have their canal themed parks. They have museums along the way. Uh, they do have artifacts from that era, uh, but a lot of it is is being redone, and a lot of it is built to look old. So, of course, the revered sites, the temples, and the original pagodas, they'll keep those. But a lot of the other stuff that we might prize highly here, buildings that are a couple hundred years old, they're just tearing those down if they're not. Uh, part of a major site. If somebody wanted to see these images and they can't afford to buy a, a copy of the book, where would they find it? Is there a website? Do you have there will be. There will be. They're not yet. Emperorsriver.com. Emperorsriver.com, just like the name of the book. And without the apostrophe. They're are all you? lowercase written together, but it's just not up yet. Okay, and um, are you going to do a, uh, a a book for common usage or for I'm, general I'm production? To. I, and this is general consumption. Yes, I'm hoping, like the <laughs> navigating by light one. That's oh, a right. traditionally published book. Yes, I we got a review copy there. I was interested in it. Okay, so I guess I can't ask for a review copy this yet. Uh, I wish. Right. Huh? <laughs> Well, thank you for being here tonight, thank and uh, thank you for interviewing with Review Magazine, and uh, hope to see more of this. All right. Thank you.